Hello everyone and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be fixing my Defender 90 and hopefully getting it back on the road. For those that haven't seen the other videos in this series, I've been trying to fix my Defender 90 TD5 after it didn't start about two or three weeks ago. I've done everything you guys have suggested here on YouTube and I finally sent my ECU off to a live tuning after cutting a hole in the back of my load bay of my Defender 90 to get to the fuel pump. Alive have worked their magic on my ECU, sent it back to me, so let's plug it in today and see what happens. seen any videos up to this point my defender 90 td5 stopped working about two or three weeks ago where it just wouldn't start i tried everything to get it sorted a lot of suggestions that you guys had here on youtube one of them was to get the fuel pump out which i did by cutting a hole in the load bay to access it got the fuel pump out checked it over unfortunately when i bought a new fuel pump it wasn't the fuel pump so i spoke to the guys over at alive tuning who have done the remap stage two on my defender they said, send us the ECU, we'll take a look at it. It could be a problem with your ECU, including one of the faults they commonly see, which is top side switch failure in the CD5s. Anyway, they sent the ECU back. I haven't unboxed it, I haven't got it out yet. So let's plug it in and see what happens. I'll tell you a bit more about the story of my ECU. If you are brand new to this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe, like this video, and leave me a comment of what you think in the box below. In my garage, I have a Defender 90 TD5, I have a Land Rover Discovery 5, and I also have a Harley Davidson Sportster, a 48, that I'm looking at doing a lot of modifications on over the coming months over winter. So if you want to keep up to speed with any of that, particularly my Defender, subscribe to the channel and you won't miss a single video. Let's take a look at what is inside and get my ECU back out. So in here, very carefully packaged, is my ECU. Now, I'll tell you a bit more about what happened with my ECU and what happened when they found it and, uh, and what happened when they took it apart at Alive to find out what was going on. So, my sticker on top of there from Alive Tuning. So, let me tell you a bit more about this. So basically, my old ECU, when it got sent to Alive, they thought it was topside switch failure on the phone. I sent it to them, they plugged it in and they couldn't even get a single reading off it. It was completely dead. So it wasn't just topside switch that failed, the whole ECU had gone. So they couldn't really diagnose exactly what the problem was, but it wouldn't plug in, it wouldn't read. So this is actually a refurbished TD5 ECU. And what they've done is just copied over all the codes for exactly the same configuration that my car was running on, including my stage two remap. So this has everything on it. And this is what we're gonna be replugging plugging into my car and hopefully when we do that it's going to come to life and we're going to have a running Defender again. Now because I tried to start my car so many times the Defender battery had actually gone flat so I've been charging that to get it going ready for this day of seeing if it now will work so I'm going to put the battery back in to underneath the passenger seat which is where it lives Perfect. Now I'll plug the battery back in and this is where I have the hole in my floor, which I am gonna patch up and make a hatch for once it takes some more of that sand dead enough around the edges. This is my old pump and this is the ring that actually came out with um, the old pump. Also the adapter ring came out as well. It was a bit of a nightmare to get out. And at the time I thought I was doing a good thing taking this out. It turns out this pump is probably absolutely fine. And this is actually um, a VDO pump, as you can see there. So it's one of the one of the good ones, They're about 300 pounds new. So what I'm gonna do is, um, is plug this in to start with. So I'm gonna put this lid back over. I'm actually gonna plug it in electrically with this socket just here. And when I do that, I'm then gonna test it with the ECU and make sure that it truly is We'll, we'll see if the problem has been fixed with this new refurb DCU. I really, really hope it has, and I expect it to, to be fixed. But I'm going to plug it in and then take a look. And it should just turn on and run when the ignition gets turned. So let's see if that is the case once I get the new ECU in. Front of the car now, got the new ECU from Alive. And this is where we're going to put the ECU back in and just plug it in and see if it works. Um, which, to be honest, I'm really, really hoping it does. So I'm going to put the ECU back in there, and then let's plug this back into the car before screwing it down or anything let's just get it plugged in and make sure those connections are good so now i guess is the big test um of seeing if this makes a difference and works easy the ignition just here let's turn this over 
and see if his lights come on this time. And it works. Engine warning light came on and I can hear the pump in the back as well. So, amazing. Turn it off now for that pump burns itself out. It actually works. So the ECU was the problem and uh, seems to be fixed. So what I'm gonna do now is put the pump back in the tank. Let's see how that goes. We've got to get the new seal on, put it back in, get the new rings, screw it back on. And hopefully, let's hope the car starts and it all works well. So what happened with my pump, as you can see, I kept the plastic ring was still on there and it came off the tank. And so I actually bought a new one. Uh, it was original Land Rover part that I bought to, um, to put back onto the top of the fuel tank in order for it to, uh, to clip in properly. So I'm gonna put this in first. Got a little socket just there. The fuel lines I've pointed downwards and they drained out initially. Um, so just gonna push that down onto there. So I actually ended up taking that thing off my head because it was getting pretty close to my phone. Falling in the fuel tank, that would have been a pretty tragic end to the whole story really, wouldn't it? Anyway, I've got this adapter ring on now and it wasn't actually a case of clipping it down, it was a case of twisting it into place. I use this tool that I bought off eBay, which is a fuel tank removal tool or something like that. And you've got this bit and you've also got a little socket head as well um, to be able to do that. And that made it so much easier to twist into place. I actually bought it originally to put the ring on, but even for this, I'd definitely recommend one of these. About £10 off eBay it makes a huge difference. I'll try and put the link below actually if in case you try to do the same job. So I've twisted that into place. The big bit goes in there and the small bit goes that side and that just locks the, the adapter ring in place. So then when we put the pump in and clamp it down with the metal ring, we'll all be good. I appreciate my success rate with the angle grinder has been quite limited so far with things I've done to this car, with the radiator and then this. But anyway, I have now just angle grind through that ring so I can take the old one off and then we'll be in a good place to start cleaning up and putting the new one back down. So before I bring all the fuel lines back through, I wanna make sure that's really clean and before I put the pump in, it makes very tight. I'm gonna start doing that now. One of the companies, I'm not sure which one it was that I bought these parts off, sent me Landy newspaper. As great as this is, unfortunately, I'm gonna use some of these pages now to help clean all this area up and get it looking a bit better. Perfect, it's looking quite clean now where that channel is, where the fuel lines are gonna come through. And so let's get the pump now and put that in. Before you put the pump back in, you've gotta put one of these rubber seals in. This is a new seal. I've read it, they always recommend putting a new seal in when you do this to make sure you get a good fit. Perfect, so fitted the seal now inside there. It's all looking very good. The adapter ring's all in place. Seal's in now, so we can now drop the pump back into that space. Let's get this pump back in. So we've got the float here, which gives you the reading on how full the tank is. I think it's probably easier if that goes in first and hook the rest of this round. Push these little cables back to get into the actual tank itself. If you twist it actually, seems to make it go a little bit easier. I think that's sitting right now, turning it around to where the fuel lines are at the front. And this compresses down, so it's like spring loaded almost. And when you do that, push it down, put the ring on and then twist. And so it's meant to be like that, kind of sits just perfectly in the tank. I get this lined up so it works. So we've got a bit of success there, it's stuck down and I can now twist this ring and tighten it, which I think is pretty tight now. I'm just gonna get a tool to put on here, just tighten it even more, but that looks quite good. It's sunk in now, the bump doesn't move, it's very firm, looks good. Tighten that as much as I can using my tool with this on now. I've tightened it quite tight. I don't wanna do too much because, well, to be fair, I can always check actually, because I've got this really handy hatch that I've cut in the bottom of my car which is a mistake, but now could be useful. I can check whether it is sealed or not and it's working or not before um, hatching it over and covering it up, but it looks pretty good. It looks in place. Gonna bring the fuel lines through now. I took a picture of the lines before I disconnected them, so I know exactly where they go, which is great. So gonna get it all connected up and let's see how it goes. You can see brought the fuel lines through and then we've also got the electricity plug as well for power. So gonna connect all them up. I've got all the fuel lines connected, just doing the power now. So with that plugged in there, that is all connected in. I feel like this is quite a terrifying moment of seeing if what we've done over the last few weeks has actually worked and been worth it. So ignition, keys are in, ignition on. It's making the noise. So I'm gonna fire up the engine now, let's see. It works. Quickly come back here realized one of the fuel pipes has just popped off and started spraying diesel all over the place, which is not great. So that obviously didn't clip in that well, but the car did start. So fine with that 
clip is and get it back in. It was a green pipe just there that popped off. Uh, I don't think those clips are in. So tip for anyone that's doing this, make sure those clips are really tightly pushed in so they're all clicked back. Um, and hopefully now, let's turn it on again and let's see if this pump works. So pump is running, engine is on, as you can probably hear. And they're staying pretty good in there. Nothing's popping out yet, which is good to see. And there's also no leaking either, which is good. So I'm gonna run this car for a little bit and see um, if anything changes. So I'm so pleased to have actually fixed the car. It does seem to be working. And as I mentioned before, I'm a doctor by background. This is not what I do day to day. So for me, this is a massive achievement to have actually fixed it and it working without having to take it off the drive. I was very, very close this time to having to tow it or get it rescued to a garage and just leave it with them because it was getting a bit beyond me, to be honest. But thank you so much to everyone that commented on previous videos about different tips and tricks. It's really helped me diagnose and get to the bottom of this. And although I have a hole in the back of my Defender, I'm gonna be able to hatch that up, cover it up. If the fuel pump goes in the future, I'll be able to uh, replace it. But actually, all in all, I've learned a lot about how this car works and also learned a lot about working on this Defender. Now, next up on the channel, I have some really, really exciting new things I'm doing to this car, as I'd already planned to do before the ECU decided to break. So I'll be doing that in the next video, talking about some of the new modifications I'm doing. I've got some really exciting plans for this towards the end of the year. So thanks for joining me on this journey with my car, and thanks for your help getting it fixed, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.